Okay, so I'm going to uh, find the electric potential difference due to a charged ring. I'm going to do it two ways. <coughs> okay, so this might be a long video, but if it's long, we'll just we'll just make it in two. Okay, so here's the here's the ring it has a radius r and a total charge q. But we want to find the electric potential just <coughs> the electric potential difference with respect to infinity along this axis, okay, right here. So if I looked at it from the side, there's my ring from the side, and there's this, let's call that the z direction. So that's a distance r. Okay, the first way to find the electric potential difference with respect to infinity is to say, <coughs> this ring is a whole bunch of point charges, and I can find the individual electric potentials. This is what we did when we found the electric field due to the ring. Okay. So if I break this into a little bitty piece right there, I can find the potential with respect to infinity, remember because it's really using an integral, uh, at that point and then add up all the points. Now here's the big difference. Here's that same point right there, or right here, and if I want to find the electric potential right there, which direction is it? Trick question. It has no direction. It's a, it's a scalar value. Potential is a scalar. So it doesn't, we don't have to worry about uh, these different things, these uh, components of the electric field. It doesn't matter. <coughs> All we need to know is this distance r. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what is the electric potential with respect to infinity due to one point charge? It's this, epsilon naught, dq over r where dq is the amount of that charge, and I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. So this is dv. This is the potential due to one little piece of that ring. So what's the expression for r then? Well, if I look right here, this is big R. That's z. So r squared equals big R squared plus z squared. So r square root of r squared plus z squared. <coughs> so if I put that in here, I get dv equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq square root z squared plus r squared. Now I need to integrate both sides. What's my integration variable? Well, as I go around this thing, what's changing? This doesn't change. It's still the same dq because it's the same size piece. Z doesn't change, that's the distance along this axis. And R doesn't change either, so nothing changes. Okay. So if I integrate both sides, then I get V equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. This is all a constant, so it doesn't really matter. I just get the integral of dq. The integral of dq is q. So I get q over the square root z squared plus r squared. That's it. Okay. Again, like the electric field due to a ring, it's not so bad. Because all the charges are the same distance from that point, so you don't really have any variation. It's pretty easy. It's easier than electric field because you don't have to worry about the component of electric field in the z-axis. Before we had to pick, for the electric field, we had to pick <coughs> um, two points up here at a time and the Y component of electric field canceled all your cell uh, left with is a Z component. We don't have that problem anymore. Okay. But this is with respect to infinity because I use the electric potential due to a point charge with respect to infinity. Okay. Which was an integral itself. We just used the result. Okay, now let's use the a different method. Let's use this. <coughs> Delta V negative E dot DL to find the electric potential, where I'm going to use the electric field due to a ring, which we found before. Uh, so in the Z direction, EZ is going to be equal to, just writing it down so I don't make a mistake, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, this is big Q, QZ over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. 
That's what we found before. <clears throat> and it has a Z, no X or Y component, just in the Z component direction. So if I integrate from infinity to, let's call this <coughs> some other variable, because I don't want to use Z twice. Let's call this, uh, I think the book uses W. Let's use W for now, it's infinity to W, and then we can change variables. Um, so we're going to integrate from here to there. <coughs> And we and DL is going to be DZ, okay? Because we're just moving in the Z direction. So this means I have delta V is going to be negative the integral from infinity to W. And I, I'll have to warn you, about half the time I make a sign error. So if I make a sign error, then just fix it later, okay? Okay, so then I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, Q, Z, and then times DL, the E dot DL is going to be DZ over Z squared plus R squared to the 3 halves. So that's it. All I have to do is evaluate that integral. I should get this. Okay. <clears throat> that's how I know if I make a sign error. So let me pull some stuff out. Negative Q, Z, 4 pi, epsilon, oh no, I can't pull the Z out. Negative Q over 4 pi, epsilon naught, um, infinity to W, Z, DZ over Z squared plus R squared to the 3 halves. <coughs> and so, in this case, I have something to the power, but this stuff inside, if I take the derivative of that, I get a z dz. So I'm going to say u, u substitution, u equals z squared plus r squared, du equals 2z dz. So z dz equals du over 2. So now my integral becomes negative q over 4 pi epsilon naught. <clears throat> I'll leave the limits off for right now. I'll get a 1 over 2 du over u to the 3 halves. Okay, so now I can use my power rule. This is u to the negative 3 halves, so if I integrate this, I'm going to get <coughs> um, I'm going to get u to the 1 half divided by 1 half so the one halves cancel. So I get Q negative Q over four pi epsilon naught one over U to the one half from infinity to W. Now I can put back in for my U, I can put this in for U, I get delta V equals negative q 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over z squared plus r squared to the 1 half from infinity to w. Okay, so I get <clears throat> this, the w term I put in here is going to give me hmm, infinity term. This looks a little messy. Seems like I did something wrong. Because if I put in W for Z, I get, I guess let's just do it. Okay, W delta V equals negative Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then I get the W term, 1 over W squared plus R squared. Square root. Minus. 1 over, oh no, this is going to be okay, except I get a negative sign. 1 over infinity squared plus r squared to the 1 half. This term goes to 0. But see, now I have a, I have a minus sign. <clears throat> but that's my right answer, right? Because that's the same thing with w except in terms of z, the negative sign. Okay, so here's the, the problem with the negative sign. I'm actually going, I think I'm going this way, 
right? I'm going from infinity to this way. So I think dl should be negative. So that would make this thing positive, and I would agree with that. I think I need to think about that. But there's <clears throat> this definitely looks like that. Okay. But there's two ways to do the electric potential. Break it into points and use the electric potential due to a point charge with respect to infinity, or integrate with based on the electric field.